say good morning. <laughs> Just open. Good morning, First Presbyterian. How are we doing today? Some of us are good. Well, Janet and I are doing very well, and we would like to start our worship service this morning with a little duet on the hammered dulcimer and the melodeon, two familiar tunes, the Ashgrove and the Shaker hymn, and then Steve will bring the seniors down and he'll give you a formal welcome. But let's prepare our hearts for worship this morning. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Janet. I'd like to add my welcome today. So good to have you in God's house. For those of you joining us virtually and in-house, welcome to First Presbyterian on this Mother's Day, and a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and grandmothers in our congregation. I'd like to ask you to take a minute and look around and see if there is somebody you've not greeted today. Let's stand and introduce ourselves to one another in Christ's love. As you make your way back to the pew, I'd like to ask you to look for the Ritual of Friendship pad. We'd love to know that you were with us today. So if that pad is at the end of the pew where you're located, we hope you'll take it, sign it, and pass it down so that everyone else has an opportunity to sign. If you look down front today, those of us in-house do have this printed in the bulletin, but especially for those of you online, I'd like to tell you about the flowers and the dedication. It says, the flowers in worship today are given to the glory of God. 
and in honor of all mothers and graduates and in memory of Charlie Curry by Cindy Curry. So Cindy, thank you so much for the beautiful flowers. And she happens to have one of the grandchildren in the graduating class. So it's a wonderful tribute to all of them and in memory of Charlie. Looking at activities in the life of the church, it's time for the Flamingo Fundraiser. The pandemic kind of scared us off of that, but if you would like to help raise the funds for our young people to go to camp and also do some type of either tribute or temptation or torture for your friends or relatives, you can have a flock of flamingos delivered to their yard by the youth group. The flamingos will show up in the yard. They'll have a sign saying they've been flocked by First Presbyterian Church. They'll stay there for 24 hours, then they'll magically fly to another yard. So if you would like to do that, the youth are going to be in the narthex today and they'll be glad to take your reservations on flamingo flocking and all those funds will go towards our two summer trips. Young people will be going to Montreat and they'll be going to the Great Escape this summer and to help offset some of those costs, we have the flamingo fund. So stop there if you will or you can call into the church office or email us and Emily will get back in touch with you about the different flamingo flockings available. We do have our high school seniors with us today and we celebrate that. A little later in the service we're going to be presenting Bibles on behalf of the congregation. And then right now the membership committee is putting the final touches on a reception downstairs. We knew on Mother's Day that you may have lunch plans so we're not doing a luncheon for this single worship service. But we do hope you'll stop by the table downstairs. We have cake, we have punch and it'll be an opportunity to congratulate these wonderful young people on their accomplishment. Family members, you'll have to come downstairs because the seniors are going to leave with the pastors right after the benediction and you will retrieve them from the table downstairs. They're going to go down and get their picture made with the cake. So we're so excited to congratulate them and you'll hear a lot more about that in our worship service today. Yesterday we held our Saturday soup kitchen and it was on kind of short notice that Betts Huff recruited a crowd. Included in the congregation were Melissa and John, Ed and Linda. Kathy and Gary, and then um, Betts, and I don't know that we're going to be able to do this every week, but she recruited three members of the praise band. So Sean and Lindsay and Dylan actually played and sang through the soup kitchen yesterday for our guests. So let's thank all those who cooked and who took time there. Their report was at least 85 people did not go to bed hungry last night. So they know they serve first to 85. We often see that people that are taking seconds are taking them away to somebody else who can't make it to the soup kitchen. So thank you so much for that. We're signed up for the rest of this month. We do have open dates in June, July, and August. So if you'd like to help feed hungry people, we would invite you to respond, sign up downstairs, or contact us at the church office and we'll put you on the soup kitchen list but we're celebrating a great day yesterday. Next Sunday, we'll be back to two worship services here. We'll also have worship at our church retreat. The all church retreat is going to be at Cedar Kirk next weekend. And we're going to collect the three cents a meal hunger offerings. So if you are putting your pennies aside at home, we hope that you'll bring them in next week for the three cents a meal hunger offering. It's great to have you with us today. It's so great on this Mother's Day to help us celebrate the role that faith has played in the lives of these young people and all of us in this congregation. And let us continue in that as we worship God singing hymn 14 for the beauty of the earth. Mine. 
When we come to confession this morning, we are aware of the ways that we have failed to live as God's people. We are like flowers which give way to weeds. But God continues to seek us out, not to condemn us, but to comfort, to forgive, and to bring us home. So let us stop and stand contrite as we confess our sins together, saying, Almighty God, we do praise you for the marvelous deeds which you have done in this world. You are the creator, the maker of all that is. You are the redeemer, the one who claims us as your children. You are the sustainer, the one who gives us the strength and spirit in need in order to live our lives. We know who you are. And yet, we often forget how we fit into your wonderful plan. Forgive us for the times when we have not thanked you for all your good gifts. Forgive us for the times when we have not amended our ways, failing to live as people who proudly bear your name. Forgive us for the times when we have forgotten to turn to you in prayer for guidance, and thus wasted our days and opportunities. As you forgive our sinful ways, dear God, make us into obedient disciples of the one who showed your great love for us in his life, death, and resurrection. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Gracious Lord, forgive us and root us in your abounding love and steadfast grace. It is through it that we may grow and truly blossom, for we stand in all of Christ's love for us. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Be at peace, for when that sorrow is so deep that we feel we cannot find a way out, God cradles us in comfort. In those moments so shadowed that we trip over our own fears, God lights the way for us. In that joy which cascades into our souls, Christ through the Holy Spirit fills us with healing. Even when we cannot see it, God's hope is all around us, surrounding us with peace and healing. For thanks be to God, it is in Christ Jesus that you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Reveling in the grace of Christ, we present children for baptism in the church. And today, Brittany and Adam Rowe are bringing their youngest daughter, 
and Mina Bell for the sacrament. So we're going to invite them and some family members to come forward at this time, especially Sister Bliss, because she's going to help us, I think, at the end of the baptism. Friends, listen for God's word as it comes to us in the gospel according to Mark. It says, They were bringing little children to Jesus that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child shall never enter it. And Jesus took the children in his arms, and he blessed them, and he laid his hands upon them. Dearly beloved, the sacrament of baptism is the word of God made visible as ordained by our Lord Jesus Christ. Baptism is to be understood as a sign of God's power and mercy in cleansing us of our sin and as a means whereby we are identified with Christ in his death and resurrection. Furthermore, baptism represents the outpouring of the Holy Spirit into the lives of God's people. It is a sign of our engrafting into the body of Christ, the church. The baptism of children and infants has particular significance for us in our faith because it reminds us that this is a sacrament of God's love and grace and that long before we are conscious of God, God has chosen us as God's own children. The sacrament of baptism publicly declares that this child is claimed by God and a part of the church of Jesus Christ. Our children also belong to the household and the family of God. Likewise, when we baptize a child, we're reminded that God has claimed us and loved us as God's precious children, that God has welcomed us into the family of faith, and we're on a lifelong journey together. In baptism today, these parents will promise to bring up their child to love and to serve Christ. You, the members of the congregation and family, on behalf of the Church of Jesus Christ, will be asked also to pledge your joining them in this endeavor in raising their child in faith. As you stand here today, Brittany and Adam, I ask you, is Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior? Do you trust in him? And do you intend your daughters to be his disciples, to obey his word, to show his love? Let's bow before God in prayer. Most merciful and loving Father, we thank you for the church of your Son, for the ministry of the word and the sacraments of grace. We praise you that you've given us gracious promises concerning our children, that in your mercy you call them to you, marking them with this sacrament as a singular token and pledge of your love. We ask you to set apart this water now from a common to a sacred use. Grant that what we do here on earth may be confirmed in heaven. In humble faith, this day we present you this child. We ask you to receive her, to fill her with your Holy Spirit, to keep her forever as your own, through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. And Bliss, why don't you show Amina that this is water. Can you just splash your hand in there a little bit? Amina, is that water? Well, it is, I promise, and you're going to know that in just a second. What is the Christian name of this child? Amina Bell Rout. Amina Bell, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, this child is now received into Christ's church. Do you, members of this family, members of this church family, on behalf of the whole church of Jesus Christ, pledge to undertake with this family the nurture of their child? And will you endeavor by your example and fellowship to strengthen Amina's ties with the household and family of God? If so, will you answer, we do. Now there's been a slight debate going whether Amina was going to want to go around with me, if Amina might go around with Bliss and me, and so we're just going to play this one, there we go, and Bliss, this is a cross that probably looks familiar to you, this is our baptismal cross, and I'll just show it to everybody out there, when we go on our mission trips to Honduras, one day we search all over a place where they make crafts, and we bring as many crosses back as we can. So this cross spells out Jesus, and what we did today is we just pledged 
that when Amina looks at us, she's going to see what people who follow Jesus look like. So I'm going to hand you that cross to hand to her. We're still not sure if Amina's going to go for a walk today, but this is a certificate of baptism that shows what we have done here today. And you want to see if Amina wants to just walk a little bit and say hi to some people? Just see if she'll take your hand and come over here. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to tell you all, this is the newest member of the Church of Jesus Christ. That's Amina Bell Rowe. And I told the family it's okay. I drove to Sarasota yesterday to have lunch with my youngest grandson who came to my arms for about 30 seconds before he decided he wasn't going to be around me. So that just happens. But Amina and Bliss, what we're going to do is this is your family. Now you recognize a lot of the folks here as your family. Those are cousins and aunts and uncles and you all know that. This is your family too. Because everybody out there is a brother or sister in Christ. And so what we're going to do is we're going to let her know what you already know in coming to Bible school and things. And that is that we're all together because we're God's children and we're brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. So on this Mother's Day, thank you for presenting your child. We welcome her into the household and family of faith. And we look forward to just seeing the family of faith continue to grow. One of these days, Bliss, you're going to be sitting over here with your robe on and you'll be one of the seniors and then you'll be telling the younger people around here what you know about God. So thank you all for coming down. And while they're going back to their seat, I'm going to invite the children who are present to join us in the front row over here for our time with younger disciples. Does anybody know, other than Baptism Day, and other than the day when our high school seniors are here, what do we call this day? Thank you. This is Mother's Day, and you were aware of that. And I wanted to show you where we get some of our ideas about mothers. This is called the Spark, the Spark Story Bible, and we've been using this in some of our children's programs here. And I want to show you some pictures and see if you can tell me maybe about some of these mothers. This one is about the creation. And after the animals were made, there was a man and a woman made. And what were their names? He was Adam and she was Eve. Eve. You've heard about her. Adam is a cool name. Adam's verifying that next to you. I won't go into the fact that Adama comes from dust and so we'll do the dust children thing later, Adam. But that's Adam and then the mother of all creation, the first mother of all, and her name was Eve. When we flip a few more pages in this study Bible, we come to a mom who looks kind of old. That looks like a grandmother, doesn't it? And you're right. You know how old this lady was when she had her baby? Yeah, she's in her 90s. And her husband was older than her. Yeah. Actually, they started out their journey when Sarah was 75. She still didn't have children. 75 years old, hadn't had children, and she kept praying. And God gave her a child. And what's that lady doing? Or what's that person doing there? Laughing. When the angel told her, you're going to have a baby and said, actually, you've got one foot in the grave and you're going to have another foot in the maternity ward. <laughs> she laughed and she named her baby Isaac. And after. Her first kid's name was Laughter. It's a story that we learned there. Then, here's another one. 
There was a lady who made a boat for her baby. You ever heard that story? No? Her, the baby's name is Moses. That is right. And at that time, the Hebrew people were told, you can't have little baby boys. And if you do, we're going to have to get rid of them. So she hid her little baby out until she couldn't hide him any longer. Then she made a little boat and she put him in the river, but she didn't leave. She watched until Pharaoh's daughter came and found him. And that baby was raised as one of Pharaoh's daughter's children. But he actually was the great leader of the Hebrew people named Moses. And it all started with his mom who wanted him. And once she got him, she would do anything for him. Then, I'm going to show you a picture of a lady riding on a donkey right before she had a baby. Yes, that's, that's Mary and that would be Joseph. Yeah. And when they were about to have a baby, they had to take a long trip. And she had to get up on a donkey and ride on the donkey for day after day after day. And when they got to the town, there wasn't even a place in the hotel for her to have her baby. Yep. It's, it's an inn like the Holiday Inn. There's a hotel there in Bethlehem. And they had the baby and they had to have it out in the stable or maybe a cave out back. Maybe in a feeding trough for the animals. And what did the lady name her baby? Jesus. That's right. That's right. It was the parking garage for the hotel, was the place where the baby was placed. That's just a few of the stories in the Bible that talk about moms. We're going to talk more about moms today and grandmothers, and I want you to listen for that, because they're really important in our lives and in our faith lives. So that lady, Sarah, who had that little boy laughter, she's one of the mothers of the Hebrew people. She's one of the people that we look back and talk about her life. If Moses' mother had not hidden him, the children of Israel may have never been delivered from slavery. And if Mary hadn't taken that donkey ride, and she took another donkey ride a little bit later, I forgot to show you that picture. After her baby Jesus was born, then Herod, crazy leader, didn't want baby Jesus to grow up to be king. And so Herod sent people out and they were going to kill the baby Jesus. And Mary and Joseph took another ride. They got on the donkey again. They went all the way to the land of Egypt and they hid there until Herod was no longer the king. Mary did wonderful things to raise her little boy. And we talk about her sometimes in church. And on Mother's Day, she's just one of those folks who are part of the story. So, I want you to listen today, and I'm going to mention three or four mothers in the sermon that are mothers that we find in the Bible. And then I want you just to think about mothers or grandmothers, aunts. I want you to think about women that have done something in your life, and I want you to thank God for them too. That's what we do too on Mother's Day. So all of you knew it was Mother's Day. If there's a mom in your life or a grandmother in your life or an aunt in your life, or a great-grandmother, if you're lucky enough to have that, thank them today. And before we go, let's fold our hands and let's thank God together as we talk to God in prayer. God, when we pick up the book called the Bible, we find story after story, and we find so many parents in there sharing faith with their children. We have just seen a baptism where parents pledge to raise their little daughter to know you as Lord and Savior. We have high school graduates here and we have parents and grandparents and we have people in the faith who've surrounded supported them and God we sit down here today as people who are blessed by the wonderful mother figures in our lives we thank you for what we've received and how our story continues the Bible story of being blessed by women of faith and we ask you to bless all of them in Christ's name amen thank you for coming today Thanks for coming out and joining us.
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Trusting in God's divine care, let us now present our tithes and offerings to God, who restores our lives eternally. Whether it's in the plates passed here in the sanctuary or online, let us now give generously as God has given to us. much to do us pray. Holy God, divine shepherd, you anoint us with the oil of gladness. Your love overflows our hearts. Accept our offerings for the good of the world as we joyfully give thanks for our life in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now continue in prayer as we pray for God's people and God's world. Let us pray together. Gracious God, who is father and mother to us all, you know our needs even before we speak them. And so we ask for your healing grace upon people and communities who are sick, who are hurting, 
and who cannot find peace. We continue to pray for the violence and loss of life in Ukraine. May your peace and justice and mercy flow over the land. Loving God, we give you thanks today for all the women in our lives and in this church family in particular who have loved and guided us. Lord, Mother's Day is not a holy day, but we know that mothers matter to you, that for generations you have heard their prayers of praise as well as of need. And so today we give you thanks for the gift of the women in our lives who are sources of comfort, sources of creativity, and sources of strength. We pray with women who share in Sarah's laughter of unbelief because their prayers have long gone unanswered, asking that they trust in the plans you have for them and your promises. We pray with women who share in Mary's shock and joy as they realize they are going to be mothers and all that motherhood will bring. We pray with women who, like Hagar, must raise their children in difficult situations over which they have little control, asking that you continue to respond to their cries and needs with steadfastness, justice, and mercy. We pray with women like the Egyptian princess in Exodus who raise and love children who do not grow in their wombs but grow in their hearts. We pray with women who cry with Rachel over the loss of a life just begun, asking that you comfort them and heal their broken hearts. We pray with women whose cup and house overflows with many in their care, asking that you give them patience and joy and peace of mind and rest. We pray with women who bless and care about children like the prophet Anna, and even though they do not have children of their own, and ask that you continue to bless them with the same joy they bring to others. We pray with grandmothers like Lois and mothers like Eunice who work hard to raise their children and grandchildren in the faith. May the seeds of faith they sow take root and give and grow fruit in your due time. We take a moment now, Lord, to remember moms and grandmas and other women we have loved who are sharing in glory with you. We thank you for the ways that they have shaped our lives and for the peace we feel, knowing the joy they now share with you. Lord, we pray for those whose relationship with their mother is not an easy one, asking that you bring healing and that you guide them on how best to honor father and mother in these situations. And we pray for moms who are learning how to be a mom in a different way because of life's many changes asking that you guide them on how best to honor the new relationships they have with their children and others. We pray for all these things and the many more that remain in our hearts, trusting in your providence and care, and grateful for your invitation to love and to be partners in creation and creating. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our scripture lessons for today begin in the Old Testament. First, I turn to the book of Jeremiah. I'll be reading today from Jeremiah chapter 29, very familiar, verse 11 from the New Revised Standard Version. God says, For surely I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then turning to the book of Psalms, to Psalm 139, beginning with verse 13. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. Friends, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thinking back on my life this week, I really don't know what plans my parents had for me. In my earliest days, there may have been a career path that seemed to be emerging. My father and my grandfather owned and operated a grain elevator in southern Illinois when I was a child. And my mother's father had a farm not far out of the town in the same community. So maybe for a brief time, the plan for my life might have been tied in with grain and growing and harvesting things. But then when I was 12 years old, we moved to Florida and our family legacy was no longer farm related. Here in the Sunshine State, my mom and my dad earned their living in the mobile home industry and then in property management based in that industry. And I still don't remember thinking back this week of specific discussions with my parents about the vocational plan for my life. Now they did scrape and save to send me to a really good high school in Tampa. And I'm sure the term college prep was a part of that discussion. Now looking back a little further this week in my life, I think at one point my plan was to be a cowboy. That was during my John Wayne phase, and I have pictures of the boots, the hat, and the toy six-shooters. Now, by the time I hit junior high, being a cowboy in Central Florida wasn't really something I was going to do, so I briefly entertained the thought of being a lawyer. Then by the end of high school, I thought that I was going to go into veterinary medicine, and so I landed at the University of Florida as an animal science major. That lasted for a year and a half. Up to that time, though, there were no cowboys, there were no attorneys, there no, were no animal doctors in my family, and for that matter, at that point, there weren't any ministers in our family either. But even though my career path wasn't planned out in detail by my mom and dad, looking back now, I know that my life path surely was. My parents took me to church and raised me in the Christian faith. My mom and dad are both elders in the Presbyterian Church, and no matter where we lived in this world, for 12 years in southern Illinois, for about nine months in Leesburg, Florida, for the rest of my junior high and my high school and my college years in Tampa, my parents took my sister and me with them when they went to church. And I learned from the Bibles that they shared with me. And as I learned from them and those stories, I've really come to appreciate the plans that they had for me. Plans like we see in the biblical story of Hannah and her son Samuel. There's an Old Testament book called 1 Samuel. In there we find the story of a faithful woman named Hannah who was married to a man named Elkanah. Hannah, like some women before her and some women after her in the Bible, wished for children, but try as she might, she couldn't conceive. The story says that Hannah went to the temple and offered this prayer to God. We find it in 1 Samuel chapter 1. She made this vow. O Lord of hosts, if you will only look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall neither drink wine nor intoxicants, and no razor will ever touch his head. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When the story continues, it says, By the grace of God, her prayer was answered. Now Hannah knew that this was a special child, a gift from God. And since, in the time when Samuel was born, the priesthood was corrupt... And God needed to raise up a new prophet. Once Hannah weaned her little boy, she took him to the temple of God Almighty. And she left him there to live. Each year, Hannah and Elkanah would go up to the temple to present their sacrifice. And each year, she would take a robe that she had sewn by hand. A little bit larger each year. And as her little boy grew, he always had a priestly robe to wear. And then we find in 1 Samuel again, chapter 1, starting at verse 27. Hannah said, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted the petition that that I made to him. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord. 
As long as my son lives, he is given to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You see, godly parents do have a plan for their children. That brings to mind probably the most famous mother of all, a lady named Mary. Matthew and Luke each tell us part of her motherhood story. Luke is the one in the gospel that focuses the most on the role of women. And so in Luke we're reminded several things about Mary. How she learned of her miraculous conception by the voice of an angel. Now if you take the Hannah story and her prayer and you push it to the limits, you'll understand that Mary's pregnancy was actually a true act of God. Mary's then told about the incredible path for her son, this descendant of King David, by some shepherds. And then when Mary and Joseph take this little baby of theirs to the temple to dedicate him, there are two prophets there, Anna and Simeon. And they explain to her how their child, her child, is actually the one to redeem all Israel. Now Mary listened to all those different tellings in her life and then Luke tells us how she responded. In Luke chapter 2 it says, His mother treasured all these things in her heart. Again, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It seems that parents and grandparents, mothers and grandmothers often make the mold and pave the path for faith in their children and their grandchildren. The Apostle Paul echoed that truth when he was writing to a young pastor named Timothy. Listen to a reading, if you will, from 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul writes to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. I am grateful to God, he said, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lois and Eunice. We find their names and then we say they just did what mothers and grandmothers often do in sharing their souls and nurturing faith in their children and grandchildren. We've seen it in our lives. Parents and grandparents might read Bible stories to us. They might present us for baptism. They encourage us to attend confirmation and youth group and Christ Kids and vacation Bible school. They send us off to summer camps. They bring us to Sunday school. They bring us to worship from cradle to high school graduation while parents have the most influence over our lives and our schedules. Parents and also grandparents often let their plans for our lives shine through and they actually are God's plans. Last year in the church we were spending some time reading through the Bible And I spent a couple of weeks along with you in my devotional time reading the Old Testament book of Jeremiah. I have to confess that short of the years when we do the read through the Bibles, I don't often read much from Jeremiah. Except about this time in the year when I joined the rest of the world in turning to Jeremiah chapter 29. Listen to that little verse that we read earlier today in its broader context. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and from all the places that I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Again, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Jeremiah reminds us that God does have a plan for us. And we know that God's plan is often implemented in the works of human agents. Faithful mothers and grandmothers, fathers and grandfathers, mentors and members of our extended families. They're all correct in reminding baptized children at the start of their journey. And high school graduates as they're getting ready to step out in a huge step of faith that what God says is true. Surely I know the plans I have for you. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To bring you a great future with hope. I don't spend much time in Jeremiah normally. I spend a little bit more time every year in the Psalms. Right in the middle of the Bible we find that incredible songbook. And Psalm 139 is a place that several times a year I find myself drawn. When I need to be reminded of who I am and how I fit into this world and God's plan. I love this Psalm in its entirety. And today, thinking about the young people who are seated down front with us and where they're getting ready to go in their lives, I wanted to remind them and you and me that God does have a plan for us. Psalm 139 goes like this. God, it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to an end, and I am still with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I come to an end, and I am still with God. Right there in the middle of the Bible, we're reminded that God made us, and God loves us, and God knows us, and God knows what lies ahead for us, and God has a plan for us in our lives, And we just need to stay in relationship and communication with our maker. And we'll get to see that plan unfold. For God is always with us. I started today by saying that I didn't know what plans my parents had for me. That's not actually an accurate statement. Now granted, they didn't drop me off in the temple when I was weaned and just bring me a robe every year hoping that I would become a pastor. And I didn't follow the career path that my dad took like Jesus did. You remember what he was called before he was the preacher and the prophet? He was the carpenter because his dad was a carpenter. But my parents did acquaint me from childhood with the sacred writings of the Bible. And they put those plans in my life because those were God's plan for me. One of the joys of being at a church as long as I've been here is that I get to know the young people as they go through confirmation and then see them graduate. And I get to know their parents and I've been around long enough, I've gotten to know a lot of their grandparents. And knowing those people and their God, I am sure that God has a plan for each of you. And it's a plan for an incredible future. And it's a part of that plan that God has for each of us. Friends, let's celebrate the powerful plan of God that comes in the promises of God as we live each day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, high school seniors, I'm going to tell you that you are at the start of a new tradition in the church. This past week, about halfway through the week, when we were announcing that we were going to be welcoming you in, we put out on Facebook that you were the newest seniors and those of us who had also put on the robes and marched across the stage might want to share our pictures with you. Now we're going to spend the whole next year collecting pictures. Today we've got about 40 of them from folks who decided that they wanted to stand in solidarity with you. So John, let's go down front because it's going to be a whole lot more fun from the front pew. 
And let's start the celebration of our seniors as they join the ranks of those of us who have already been there. Like I said, we've got a year now to collect your high school pictures. So next year, if you want to be featured up here, once you post it on Facebook, it's public to the world. So we're glad to capture it here. Mrs. Negley and I have watched this slideshow emerge over the last few days. And she said, at this point, I should say to the four of you all, if a group like that can make it in the world, there's good hope for you all. So I'd like to have our seniors come stand up front now. Come both ways or either way and just come get up front. We had a couple who could not make it with us today, but we are so pleased today. Kaylee Arnold is down here, Preston Allen, Caden Cook, and, oh my goodness, Tristan Bartell. Good to see you all. Now, we're going to have a reception for them downstairs in a few minutes, and they're going to have something in their hands that you're giving them. Our Bibles here for our seniors are a Bible that we have given over the years. So, Kaylee, there you dear. Tristan, Preston, and Caden. Now those Bibles you'll see are a little bit bigger than the last Bible we gave them. If they were here in the third grade, they got this Bible. It's a good news Bible and we've always said it's written on the fourth grade level, but our kids are just a little advanced in this church. It's wonderful, simple, but it's a Bible they can read to themselves. Many of them have that in their biblical library. They all came through confirmation with us in the sixth grade, and they got a Bible that looks like this. The cover has changed in color, but it's the exact same Bible. It's a student Bible. It's a New International Version student Bible. It has wonderful study guides in it, and it's really meant for somebody who's reading the Bible with a group, but reading by themselves. It's a great tool, and you gave that to them. And now we've given them the New Oxford Annotated New Revised Standard Ecumenical Study Bible. This is an incredible Bible. It goes with these other two. It's a different translation. We had the Good News, the NIV. This is the New Revised Standard Version. If you end up in a college class next year and they require you to have a Bible, odds are this is the Bible they're going to require you to have. So we're giving you a step ahead on that. Now these students also have one more thing in their Bible. There's a bookmark that Miss Connie made for you. And so that will help you mark the pages as you're reading along. It will remind you this from your graduation. 
And in the back of your Bible, since all of you did go through confirmation, you have an envelope with your name on it. And I told you down or back in the room, sometime today I want you to open it up because we have your statement of faith in there from confirmation six years ago. So you'll be able to read for yourself and share with your family what it was that you thought about God then. Then you're also going to have an information sheet that tells your favorite color, your favorite place to be, and what you plan to do when you grow up. So I'm going to be anxious to hear how your prediction from six years ago stands today. But that's a reminder that your families have had you on a faith journey and they've let us be partners with you. We knew you when you were little. We knew you when you were in confirmation. We know you now and we hope to continue to know you in your faith journey. In the front of your Bible, it will say your name, and then it says, May this Bible go with you in your faith journey, along with the prayers of your friends and family at First Presbyterian Church. So we congratulate you today, and we're going to ask God to bless you. So let's start with the congratulations for all that they've accomplished. And let's start by offering that prayer that we promised. Let's bow before God. Wonderful God, we thank you for the people in our lives who have made a difference in faith. We thank you for those mother figures and those grandmother figures who have nurtured us in faith. We thank you for the fathers, the grandfathers, and those fatherly figures in our faith also. We thank you for every dedicated teacher, whether it's here in church programs or in our schooling. We thank you for the people who share the pews with us, those in our neighborhoods, those who have prayed for us each and every day. And God, we add our prayers to these young people here. We ask you to bless Tristan and Caden and Preston and Kaylee. We ask you to bless them in their journey and just help them as they move forward in faith. We ask you to make graduation a special event and one more step in this incredible plan for their lives. We thank you for this time together and for being able to give them this road map, this Bible, that they can take along on the journey. In Christ's name, amen. I'd like you to join us as we conclude our celebration of worship today. Take your hymn books out, if you will, and somebody tell me what hymn we're going to sing. Number 488. I was there to hear your morning cry. Seniors are going to stand up here because right after the benediction, like I say, they're going to go out with the pastors and you'll meet them in McLeod Hall directly beneath. Let's stand and praise God together. Which 
just one more surprise. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. The word is for you. And for all you former seniors, pictured or not up there, and to those of you who are a little younger on the journey, the word is to all of us. God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. Plan to give you a future with hope. God has incredible things in store for each of us starting today. And let us claim those as children of God. And as we go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Be